Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. I am Captain Foley. Pew! Pew pew pew! More like a pew. I'm Connor Kongs. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about the latest weapon that we see in uh, Episode 2, Season 3 of Discovery. I like to call it, I've kind of coined a, frame, a phrase for it, the Phase Raptor. Um, phase the bad Raptor guys, Beam Gun. Yes. The bad guys in the bar have a really cool weapon, which, matching the vibe of everything else in the bar, looks very Western. It looks very much like a old-fashioned shotgun, um, but it's got some unique f capabilities by the looks of it. Um, it can induce pain um, as instead of just flat-out killing somebody. So we thought we might as well talk about the design and just the, the effects of the gun. So. And to note, we, di we, we didn't talk about last week the custom arm guns. I mean, we're going to see them more, so I think that's okay. And this, and also the the other guy's gun. This episode, there is also the bar guy's guns, but this one is clearly showed off as more of a more of a piece. Um, and for me, this gun, I get Ronan's gun from Stargate vibes, which is the particle magnum, that hugely extended barrel, similar trigger. It, stylistically, very very similar. Um, it, but it is odd how this gun is unbelievably simple, and yet it stands out a little bit. That's just an interesting balance because it is just a handle with a rectangle barrel on it. Like it's so simple, but there's something about it, it does kind of work a bit more than it should. It it does have like a uh, like a charge meter thing on the side as yes. well, which is a nice touch. And actually, I didn't realize this till just now looking at the photos, but it looks like the handle actually folds up. It looks like it's got a, a swivel point there. It, it um, does, but I don't know how the trigger guard would, would go with it. I mean, I guess it could. Well, it wouldn't. The trigger the trigger guard is built into the main body. You can see where this handle would slide right down in to do that. But I don't know why you'd want it to go up. Maybe you're going to use it as a baseball bat. Maybe to holster it, like it goes flat, and then you like. Maybe, maybe, or just use it as a club. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Lightsaber. <clears throat> well, I mean, the one shot you have here of him firing it um, at Cal. Um, and he's like behind the gun like this. He looks like when I saw the, the little, I have the, my my view on here set to large thumbnails, and it looked like Qui Gon Jinn with a lightsaber, <laughs> just because of the hair. <laughs> I'm like, why is there a Star? Wars? Oh, it's not okay. And then, and then, so this guy gets hit. Cal gets hit. Um, you hear his chest like sizzling and burning after he hits the floor, but he's got blood coming out of his nose and his eyes. And then Giorgio gets shot, and he's yeah. Actually, makes the point of saying we're going to make this, we're going to take some time here and make you suffer. Um, so when she got hit, though, I'm like, oh shit, she's dead. Oh no, she's not. Okay, because <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. But uh, well, she does bleed. Get with this, does bleed. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Like she says, um, what you call pain, I call foreplay. Like she's into that. She's she's fine with it. See, that's so. the Nazi we know and love. Because <laughs> remember, she is literally Hitler, worse than Hitler. No, I thought it was odd to give such a graphically non-graphic death to this. I mean, this guy was great, so it's very sad to see him die. But and you know, we've already had in TOS one phaser can disintegrate part of a building, can wide beam an entire room, can disintegrate like that. It can already do everything. That's why the idea of having a phaser rifle is quite redundant to some extent, like in TNG, because the phaser can already do everything a rifle can do, in theory. Maybe it's not as as at 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 as long a range, but I mean that's most time that's not going to be the case. So how can we evolve it? So this to me was interesting because it was more this weapon more to me felt like it's a channel of power. It's not so much a gun; it's so much a tool. Where it, it the spectrum of what it can do is much more broad. Obviously, it is a weapon, but this death of the guy is like maximal pain. And hurting the body. You know, we've already seen in Discovery Season One the most painful way to die ever imagined. It was those little balls that disintegrate. You know, it was horrible. So that you know, this is obviously not as bad as that because that was called the worst way to die. But the way they give him his death is is it lingers, and lingering is the worst part. It know? almost seems like it could be a mining tool as well. Yeah, then. absolutely. Because um, the the beam does seem <clears throat> like. Uh, it could maybe be used to cut rock or, or something as well, which I would totally buy considering that this is a mining colony, essentially. Um, yeah, I just, I really appreciated the design of it as far as being, looking Wild Westy, like the frontier kind of look. Uh, it definitely had that shotgun feel for me, which I liked. And then to see that it wasn't just a beam weapon, they're dead. 
I kind of liked the whole. Um, I mean, sure, there's diff- probably different settings on it. Well, Georgia know. also shoots a guy with it in a pulse form, and it kills instantly, which I thought was a bit of a weird moment. It's like we've really set up that it's a long beam weapon, and she poof dead. It's like you don't know how this gun works. How did you swap it to kill and pulse without knowing how to use it? I think it was another guy's weapon. Fine, but. And I can see Georgia having nicked one of the three that was on the floor because she gave her one to the guy. Or you know, but there's there's three guys, there's three guns. So I can see her having one in a later episode. Yeah, she did. She handed one to Saru when he told her to stand down, and she like f- laughed and flicked it. Wouldn't it have been great though if she'd said, "Us oh, reminds me of all the guns I used to use." You know, oh yeah, we designed this tech years ago. <laughs> I mean, only we had a more painful setting. Yeah. <laughs> You, you induce mold sort of pain, I induce real pain. Uh, now that said, obviously, the prop design is incredibly simple. You shouldn't get any awards for good prop design. Like, it's as basic as you can. It looks resiny and it looks... But there's something oddly science fiction about it. Um, it does kind of like from dark matter or whatever, but the way it's highlighted on gives it that extra bit of extra. I'm not sure why it has a, a, a sight, though. Um, but I mean, it, yeah, that's design over function. You know, he's obviously not doing this. I mean, the way he shoots or any sense of recoil, any sense of anything, like, this is the most mundane thing to him. You know, this gun is literally... So, Stuart, I just found an image, and we, we guessed this, but look, the gun actually does fold back mm. in and is flat. Boy, you have to stop and miss it, and the, the, the thing does go with it, and there you go, Stuart, we were right. With, with the way he's holding it there, it almost seems like there's almost like a knife there, too. Like, it, the, the main part of the gun is a sheath, and pull it out to be a knife. Um, that would be kind of neat, actually. So there you go. It does fold. Okay. And it does. I mean, that's kind of how I thought the 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 hilt would or the trigger guard would go with it, kind of just extend a bit, be into the hilt. But also, the guy behind him is holding it like a rifle, like a two-handed thing, which kind of looks a bit odd, knowing how big it is. Um, but yeah, definitely more functionality. And yeah, it would definitely be fun if it if it you know if even one of the sides electrifies, so it's also a, a laser knife. Because I mean, that actually, that actually feels appropriate, and like you said, I love that it's a mining tool. Because as we saw in you know just Picard season one, a laser is still a laser. An engineering mining laser torch can kill people just as effectively as a phaser can. It means very little difference. And you had mentioned almost no recoil, and it's true. Most beam weapons you see in Star Trek don't have any kind of recoil. Well, I can see a really powerful beam having some kind of kick, but you know, like this, you have to stabilize it for the first second or two, but. Kind of defeat the purpose, to be fair. Well, I mean, like a, like a turret sort of thing. Yeah, like a real, like, overpowered... Mm. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. A a oddly memorable, boring gun. So well done. <laughs> I like the design, so I thought we'd talk about it. It looks kind of cool, so... Uh, let us know in the comments, guys, what you think about the design. Um, Definitely and, Ronan's gun. Uh, Definitely Ronan's gun, uh, stylistically. Yeah. I wonder if we'll see it again in the season, or I wonder if we'll see it in another show, because it's a cool prop. I'm sure they could just use it in different shows as well. Might have already been used in another show. If it has, let us know in the comments if you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, tune back in for more great stuff. We like to do breakdown videos like this. Anytime there's new tech, new ships, we're there, because that's what we do. It is what and we do. We also, we also do lives as well. <gasps> You can talk to us live? That's, well, small latency. But, you know, yes, join us live often during the week, every Friday and throughout the early weekdays as well. And occasionally, Stuart just jumps on and says hey to you all himself. And if you do find those lives, see us on those lives and join in, then do Super Chat if you can. We do rely on fan uh, interaction, fan donation to allow us to keep going. But you guys do raise to that level, raise that, to that challenge, and we always appreciate it. Uh, but anyone new that wants to come and say hey, and then we do these big review lives, you know, every, every Friday. It's amazing to have people say something that might, you know, for $5, might completely change our conversation or change how we feel about something. And that's brilliant because everyone sees these things differently. So do join, do Super Chat or Patreon, the monthly thing, uh, PayPal, trygoodsahotmail.com. That is the PayPal address. Uh, or just, you know, join the channel as well. All great, all super helpful. And if you can't, then just do like, subscribe. Those numbers do help. Even dislike if you really want to, but preferably like. Yeah, don't dislike. That's just douchey. Anyway, <laughs> until next time, guys. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Captain Foley. Bye, guys.